What's going on y'all and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Don't be fooled by what's on the screen. This will be an Infinite Horizon Akadis video where we go over the builds, honest review, talk about suggestions on stats, gear, skill enhancements, artifacts, but I wanted to give y'all a quick PSA. Some of y'all saw it when you logged in. There's like an Ezrin Day Foundation coupon. If you're curious where to put it, uh, here is the website up top, guys. I will put this link in the pinned comment or in the description somewhere so you guys can find it easily. You can also input this code five years with you via in-game if you know where to look. You go to the events tab and just scroll all the way to the bottom. But for those of you that may not find it, can't find it, just use this link. Make sure you don't mess up any of the info. Do not miss out on this. It's like a thousand energy plus some other good stuff like artifact charms, I believe. Uh, it's very, very good. So I just wanted to get y'all on board. Uh, don't miss out. And with that being said, let's start our review. All right, guys, let's jump straight into it. Here's the stat line I decided on. And as always, this guide is catered for real-time arena, especially at the higher level. So Emperor Plus. That's the opponents I've been fighting against. And I really think that's the testament to where a unit should hold up. Because obviously a lot of other units work at lower levels of play. And that is fine. But the true testament obviously is at the higher levels where people are picking the meta units, the sweaty compositions. And that's where we want to see these new units hold up. So the gear I was using today, it wasn't as good as we're rocking here. As always, I like to rock a little bit of just random gear I have that's not stealing from anybody to really see if the unit can hold up without premium gear. This is what I'm going to use i think moving forward and i'll tell you now why so obviously guys with soul weaver stats we want to have a good amount of effective hp so bulk and if you can guys prefer health as she does have some health scaling on her kit right so if you guys can you know swap around more health for defense it's really going to depend on how your substats roll um i would obviously like to have more health here because remember, when we have a combination, that's what we call effective HP, overall bulk. Uh, but ultimately, just use what you got and you should be fine. Just make sure this number, both of these numbers together look good enough. Speed is going to be up to taste, but I will mention, guys, that her scaling or her, sorry, her combat readiness manipulation for herself is actually really nice. And especially, I was testing this artifact today as well. If you guys have, and we'll cover more in the artifact selection here in depth. But if you guys have Soul Constellation that's not being used and your Garden Ice Crystals or whatever other artifact is already being used up by a different Soul Weaver, I think this artifact has a lot of potential too because of the massive amount of effect resistance it gives. And I'll tell you why that's so important here in just a second. But also the combat readiness push because enemies will be using those non-attack skills, right? That's the kind of compositions the teams we're going to want to bring her against, obviously, is debuffs. And we'll cover that in the skill section but we have 215 speed which we just get from the speed set here guys if you guys want to rock something like uh four pieces of effect resist um you can do that i think just make sure your speed isn't too slow i think it is important to cycle her kit because in some situations you'll be holding this skill three versus them holding their debuffs um other than that though speed set if you have it resist set looks good I don't think there's really any other sets that this kind of Soul Weaver would want. So just use what you have for overall stats. The main thing is probably just speed plus ER set. You'll be good to go. Last thing. This is the most important part. I keep referencing it. The effect resist. I'm seeing it at 257, right? Plus this artifact. We're going to be at around 270. And I think versus certain units, this is not enough. The problem I think with the KDs in some situations is when you go up a units against problem units like Pirate Captain Flan, which some people build at ridiculous numbers, uh, you know, up to 200, 250, maybe even higher. Unless you guys are sitting at above 300 effect resist, you can still get a Katie's debuffed, stunned, whatever it might be. And then you don't have that big cleanse, that big payoff on the skill three for your squad. And then, of course, you're in trouble, right? Whereas units like Destina have that free buff that gives her a ton of effect resist. Units like Meteor to Kuwait versus most compositions can shrug off those debuffs. I think a Katie's is it, it is very important, guys, that you get your effect resist as high as possible. Otherwise, smart opponents will abuse the fact that she has no inherent help on cleansing herself. And beyond just stacking a ton of effectors. So make sure that's important. And we'll cover that in the artifact selection. And maybe that's why some of y'all might want to stack six pieces of resist set. Now let's cover her skills and just talk about her overall strengths and weaknesses. So skill one is very similar to Maid Chloe. Right, guys? Uh, we have a 40% chance at full skill enhancement here to bonk or stun the opponent. And as of you guys, if you guys have been watching the World Championship, which I'm casting, you've seen, I think, already on a few occasions here where this can make or break or entirely decide a match on its own. So a very strong skill. And the fact that you soul burn it as well for 100% chance, extremely strong. I keep talking about her cycling, her combat readiness man manipulation for herself. This is going to give you lots of opportunities. So don't skimp here. We'll cover that in the skill enhancement guide. The skill two, very, very good as well. The two-turn cooldown is very very nice it's just an overall just strong ability in general it does have max uh, health scaling which is why i said you know maybe prefer some uh hp on your unit if possible but other than that it's just a good barrier that will help protect a 
Pretty big combat readiness push, not as much as certain other soybers or units, but still 40% is nothing to scoff at. That's a huge chunk of combat readiness manipulation. And like I keep saying with a two turn cooldown, just a strong skill. And this is nice because on the skill three, we're going to be holding this ability for a big payoff. And sometimes our opponent, when I fought a few Conquer Lilies here, they didn't want to necessarily give the opportunity to get, you know, up to four amazing debuffs or more, right? If they have other debuffers on top of that. But, um, this is a kind of awkward ability to use for various reasons, so let's talk about it right now. So we do have a Dispel All Debuffs, which is good, right? Being able to Dispel All Debuffs, not every Soul Weaver or Cleanser has that, so this is obviously a great start. The random buff is really what makes Infinite Horizon and Akades unique, because some of these are insane, guys. The fact that you have an increased attack, greater attack buff, which I did roll here and there, is really nice. Now, at the same time, you have bad buffs like increased crit hit chance, which are not good. I rolled those as well. But overall, your likelihood of hitting something just, that's just really powerful is high up there, as most of the buffs in this list are great. Now, the next part, amount recovered increases proportional to the caster's max health. This thing, guys, sucks. So I was using Shamadra's staff with my maid Chloe, sometimes with Infinite Horizon or Katie's. And if you ever just need to rip this just for heals, let's say they were holding their debuffs. Let's say you brought a Katie's against not very many debuffs or any at all. If you guys just need healing from a Katie's, this thing heals like crap. At 16.3k health, maybe some of y'all can get higher, but I imagine still the fact that I had Shimadras for the bonus healing, it was healing from anywhere from three to 4,000. Not enough in a clutch situation. You don't rely on this for healing at all. You really want to pay off on a big cleanse and a big... Uh, greater attack, or excuse me, just buff in general. If you get the greater attack buff, that's obviously great. But that's the big thing with the Kades. It's a little bit awkward depending on if your opponent brings enough debuffs, if they want to hold their buffs or not. And remember, if they do end up holding their debuffs, you always get that increased combat readiness pushing for more skill 2s and skill 1s. So it feels pretty good overall. Kudos to Smilegate for including this. I think they were expecting players to do that. Uh, so it is a big help there. But the other thing, like I keep saying, against certain debuffers, guys, if you only bring a Kades alone, and they either cover your effect, effectiveness versus effect resist right here. If they get to stun you, stop you from cleansing, a lot of times if she's your only cleanser, it's all over. So make sure your effect resist is on point. And it is a little bit awkward on skill 3 versus the meta units that you might be fighting at higher levels of play. Anything outside of that, arenas, guild wars, um, if you're not expecting your opponents to always be picking like pure meta units, I think Akadis is so fun and really strong overall. The cycling, the skill 2 barrier, the low cooldowns, the stuns. And then just high rolling those buffs is really fun. I was saying, guys, I rolled that greater attack buff on one of my DPS carries and it decided the match from the get-go. And then one other time I rolled crit chance when I needed literally anything else. And I think it either lost me in the match or almost lost me in the match. So there is a little bit of a roulette wheel, but RNG isn't something you should be uh, scared of in Epic 7. You want to just maximize the amount of good RNG. And I think Akades does that pretty well. Okay, before we talk about whether or not you should summon, let's quickly wrap up the uh, skill enhancements and the artifact selection part. Um, she is a plus 13 unit in my opinion. If you guys want to skimp, I would say you could probably skip out on the skill 1. I really think you should get at least the plus 3. It's very cheap. It costs like 3 Molagora. The plus 5 involves a little bit of Catalyst plus more Mola. So if you guys want to skip out on 5%, be my guess. You can always Soul Burn for 100%, but I think the 40% chance of stun is so nice. She will be taking a lot of skill 1s. Uh, skill 2, guys, you want to max this out. She'll have this. This is really what she's going to be using when you're holding the skill 3. We want that extra berry strength, especially because I keep telling y'all the healing that she outputs is not very high. So any extra survivability, we need it. Skill 3, the minus 1 turn cooldown. Now, in actual combat, in actual gameplay, I don't know how many times I casted more than one skill 3, like, in uh, in a single game. A lot of times it was decided by one skill 3 or not. But obviously, you it will come up here and there, and it's not very expensive, so make sure you max this out as well. Going from 5 turns to 5 turns cooldown to 4 turns is relevant. Make sure you get this, alright? So overall, I think she's a plus 13 unit, but if you have to skimp, go ahead and just cut out the skill 1 until you have enough Molagora for her. Now, the Artifact Selection Guide. Boys! I kept telling y'all, make sure you summon Guardian Ice Crystals. Once again, this is probably her premier artifact, at least in my opinion. I think she has a lot of different choices you could go, uh, you could try out, which we'll cover here in just a second. But this artifact needs to be said. It provides that extra out of turn healing, which Akadis struggles with. Healing just in general gives us the effect resistance we need on top of that too. Because remember, she has no help like other characters with cleansing herself and, you know, just shrugging off debuffs. So having enough effect resistance to reach those thresholds is super important. This artifact does everything. I wish I had more of these. I wish I had a crazy amount of these. Now, if we're not going to be using that, let's say it's on someone else. I did talk about the Ocean Breeze Luluk artifact. I think this thing is nice, mainly for the effect resistance. Just keep in mind, you're not going to have any sustain or any healing uh, beyond your skill three, which the healing there 
is terrible. Don't forget the skill three healing on her kit. Even with higher health, I think it's still not very good. So having extra healing through the artifact is nice. But this is still a great artifact for the cycling. I was testing this out today. It felt good. And the massive amounts of effect resist. If you guys have anything higher, this could be a great artifact for her. Guardian Ice Crystals, Premier and Slot. And I think artifacts like Unfading Memories, once again, right? Provides some healing and provides effect resist. Her skill tool cooldown is also good enough where I think this will give a decent amount. Plus, when you rip the skill three, extra healing is definitely needed. So not a bad artifact if you guys have high levels of this as well. And then I think maybe something like Shamadra Staff, which we also talked about on my May Chloe, could be good too. So if you guys notice a trend, have things that buff effect resist and anything that buffs healing or helps out with that, I think you'll be okay uh, overall. But really, if you have an extra guard and ice crystals, just slap that on her for now, and I think you'll be good to go. So in closing, is Infinite Horizon and Katie's worth up to 110 summons or 5,500 mystics? Probably not. By probably, I mean if you're newer, don't ever summon four stars. Uh, save for the five stars, unless they're the power level of like Angel Light, Angelica, and even then, I really think that the Mystic uh, four star summons aren't worth it until they get a reduction in cost. I think over halfway to the point of an ML5, Moonlight five star instead, you could be pulling like Last Rider Crow, who's on the banner. You definitely don't need a unit like Infinite Horizon and Akades. I think if you guys can just combo certain other Soul Evers, you can fill in the holes. The, the big thing for her really is just that randomized roulette where she is nice versus debuffs, and if you hit that greater attack buff, it feels really good. But overall, there is some inconsistency with the skill three, the fact that she doesn't have great healing output, and she will struggle against very heavy debuffers too, because she has no inherent effect resist help. So you need to have a lot of effect resist, and even then you could be in trouble. So overall, I think she's an amazing unit. The fact that she can even work at high levels of RTA is good. The fact that she works against like meta units like Conquer Lilith, I think is great. And uh, the buffs are very fun, but you don't need her. She doesn't bring anything really unique to the table. Um, just use other Soul Evers instead, and maybe you'll get her later on with the Galaxy Bookmark School Transmits, and you can refer back to the guide and, and go from there. But overall, I encourage, unless she's your favorite unit in the game, do not use 5,500 Mystics. I did end up pitting. Don't do what I did. And uh, yeah, I think we'll wrap things up there, guys. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.